Hi, I'm Harvey, K5HRV, and I want to show you my first ever attempt at a ham radio go box. So, first we start with the bag that I found to carry my go box in, which is really cool because I was somehow able to find a reasonably priced backpack that just perfectly fit the uh, Pelican case, or actually Pelican type case that I put it in. It's actually by a company called Condition One. They're really good, by the way. Um, and behind that, you can see my incredibly messy workbench. Why is it messy? Because I've been making this thing. Normally, it's not that um, messy, I guess, usually. Anyway, let's go ahead and dive into this thing. So, here at the top, I've got all of the accoutrement. So you will see here in a moment that there is a Raspberry Pi that I have built in. And so we have to have the wireless keyboard, very important. And got a uh, QIT microphone that came with the QIT radio that I uh, purchased for this. Um, this microphone is going to be replaced. The radio is great. The microphone, eh, not so much. Everybody I talk to says it's, uh, uh, I sound pretty hollow on it. So set that back there and flip this back around. Oof. Down in here, I have an Ed Fong uh, uh, J-Pole, uh, the portable type of uh, J-Pole with uh, a couple of extension uh, cables that I ordered along with it. Just a fantastic uh, 2 meter, 70 centimeter um, outfit here that they have. Uh, antenna. Ha, that's the word I'm looking for. And power cable uh, in case uh, I'm near power to uh, be able to plug in to power my uh, go box rather than using the 12 volt, 12 amp hour battery that I have in there. And down here, uh, you can't really see that on the camera that well. Down here, uh, using uh, the Molly attachment system, and it's, I've unsnapped it, that's lovely. Uh, a whole bunch of stuff, screwdrivers, uh, I've got a knife in there, um, flashlight, extra batteries, etc., etc. all the usual stuff. Oh, and one very, very important thing. Cordage. That's how I get this uh, antenna up and over a tree or up on a pole, which I have yet to build, but I bought all the parts today. Anyhow, let's jump into this thing. So, wow, this is really boring uh, footage here, watching somebody take this thing out and struggle with it. I'll be right back. Okay, now, got that thing out. That was like the birth in a calf. Maybe I should get a slightly larger backpack. Anyway, here it is. Uh, this is a uh, Condition 1 case, as I mentioned before. Uh, and I am a member of Skywarn. I am a member of Ares, Amateur Radio Emergency Service. And that is the main reason that I built this, so that I could deploy if I am away from my base station at home. Uh, so... Let's open it up and take a look. So first, I'm gonna turn it on. And you can see that I've got a seven inch TFT uh, LCD screen here for the um, Raspberry Pi that I have down under here. Um, and I might as well just go ahead and boot that up right now. So we'll turn the computer on and it'll eventually come up. So while that's going on, you can see that I've got um, a uh, voltmeter here uh, showing the voltage from the battery. Now, if I plug this thing into power, which I can do right here, um, it will suddenly show 13.8 volts uh, because I have a power supply in here that uh, converts from 110 AC to 13.8 DC. And there's this really cool device that I got from the Astron Corporation, uh, the 
Astron BB30M, I believe, uh, Bravo, Bravo 30 mic, uh, which uh, charges the battery uh, and supplies power to everything here when I'm plugged into power um, and will even do some load balancing. Uh, so if I am drawing more than the battery can provide, uh, it'll stop recharging the battery while it's plugged into power and it will draw from the battery and uh, from line power. Uh, of course, with this setup, that's just never gonna happen. Uh, this is the QIT version of the KT7900D. Um, it is a 25 watt, uh, up to 25 watt transceiver. Uh, fun little radio, uh, two meter, 440. Um, and I was just out testing it in my neighborhood uh, a few hours ago and it just works great. Uh, I can hit the local repeaters and full quieting, crystal clear. It's just, it's just a wonderful little uh, workhorse for, for a Chinese radio, I must say. But um, uh, I also have here a 12 volt uh, old uh, cigarette lighter style power socket right there. And I really, really believe in uh, five volt USB charging. So here are two uh, USB 5 volt charge only. There's no data here. And here it is again. And you can see I need to tighten this up back behind the plate here because it's come a little loose. I just need to tighten that that nut that uh, screws up into the uh, the form factor of this. And then here we have USB data which plugs into the Raspberry Pi that's under here and uh, analog audio also for the Raspberry Pi. And as you can see, my Raspberry Pi is booted up and I can use this cute little doohickey, which was like 12 or 13 bucks on AliExpress.com. And I just turn it on there. It has a cell phone battery in it, so it's rechargeable through uh, micro USB. And uh, I, the, Maybe a little hard to tell. Yeah, you can kind of see it's glowing red right there. I can make it glow pretty much any color. And I can move the mouse around. And I'm currently hooked up to the network in my house, as a matter of fact. So anywhere I get a Wi-Fi signal, uh, I can get on the Internet with this thing, which is really cool. Now, I have a lot of future plans for this. Uh, I still need, uh, frankly, to do a lot of learning about... Uh, how to interface uh, Raspberry Pi and Raspbian successfully and cleanly uh, with WinLink. Uh, I know that there are a lot of people with a lot of different opinions about how to do that. I haven't picked one yet or two or three or whatever. Uh, and again, I still have a lot of learning to do there. I'm still relatively new to all of this. Um, the rest of the tour, I have a big old fan right here. And uh, computer fan, it's, uh, this is an 80 millimeter per side um, computer fan. And this is a filter that I have on it. So it does blow air down into uh, the unit down here. And then this is where it will exhaust. And I have, this, this fan has never turned on. I have a temperature sensor down in there. That, uh, it's set so that anytime it hits 40 degrees Celsius or higher, that fan is going to kick on. Now, of course, I've tested it using a heat gun, but other than that, it's it's just I've never it it's never been pushed hard enough to get that hot. And I was just outside on a hot Texas summer day, uh, operating uh, quite a bit with this thing. Oh yeah, by the way, this actually turns on. Cool. I'm not going to tell you too much about this radio. You can there are lots of videos about about this radio and other similar radios that would be much more authoritative than, than anything I could tell you about this right now. So, let me turn that off. That's pretty much it, not too fancy. Oh, one last thing. I can, let me tilt this up a little bit, turn on the lights. So I got some RGB uh, LCD lights that, that are sticky on the back and I just have them set to be red all the time to help preserve uh, your uh, night vision. Um, though it also comes with a little remote control, which I have in the backpack, um, to change it to other colors, including white, if I really want to see really well. And say that as I shake the camera around tremendously. Um, so 
This is a battery isolate switch. Um, and this is a switch that would enable the flow from uh, line power into the entire system here. So if I plug this in, I would then need to flip this on in order for uh, the power from the 13.8 volts uh, coming in through here to uh, flow out to the rest of the system. And this switch right here, I intended to do something with it. And frankly, I redesigned the, the uh, electrical layout so many times that I forgot what I was going to do with that. So I have a switch for whatever I might think of in the future. I don't know. Anyhow, that's pretty much it. So that's my first attempt. As with many projects, it's never going to be done. I'm sure that I will think of many different modifications I can make to it, improvements. I've already told you about one. I want to put an HF radio in there, at least make it swappable with the uh, uh, dual band that I have in there right now. Um, the pack comes in at about 30, 31 pounds right now. So it's not a small amount of weight, but it's not a gargantuan amount of weight either. Uh, I carried it, oh, five, 600 yards to and from the pool uh, from my house uh, earlier uh, this afternoon. And after I adjusted the backpack, you know, I, yeah, it was, yeah, it was fine. It was fine. It was great. So like, subscribe, all the usual stuff that popular Facebook people tell you to do, I would appreciate it. Thanks. Let me know what you think in the comments. Be nice. I'm very thin-skinned, and I'm really big, and I get angry. <laughs> I'm kidding. I wouldn't hurt a fly. So, we'll see you next time. One thing I forgot to say. The really, really sweet control panel, and yeah, this is nice. This is made of something similar to Alumalite. Just look that up on the internet. Um, Alumalite is corrugated plastic with thin aluminum sheets making a sandwich, so on both sides of it, of the uh, corrugated plastic. This does not have corrugated plastic core. It has a solid plastic core, and it's about a quarter inch thick. Um, and the reason that all the holes are absolutely beautifully aligned and perfectly sized and all that, and including all the holes for the components here, the reason is because I am fortunate enough to work for an employer that happens to have a CNC machine and really doesn't care if uh, I get to use it. So this was a piece of scrap material. So um, I actually got this for free. Um, I know you want to punch me in the neck right now, but you know, hey, I deserved this break. This was this was a tough first project for me. And no, I'm not going to show you underneath it because until I dress the wires, it is a god-awful rat's nest and I would be horribly embarrassed. <laughs>